For each polynomial function, 1. Find the zeros and their multiplicities. 2. Find the y-intercept. 3. Describe the end behavior. And 4. What other points are required to draw the graph accurately? Use this information to sketch the graph. In part A, we have p of x equals 1 over 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 3, a quadratic polynomial with a positive leading coefficient. We'll begin by finding the zeros and their multiplicities. Find the roots of the equation p of x equals 0. We can do this by writing the equation 1 over 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 5 equals 0 when x equals 5, and x plus 3 equals 0 when x equals negative 3. Both roots have a multiplicity of 1. The x-intercepts occur at negative 3, 0, and 5, 0, and the graph will pass to the x-axis at both intercepts. Next, we'll find the y-intercept. We can find the y-intercept by evaluating p at 0, since the y-intercept occurs where x equals 0. Replace the function input with 0 and evaluate. The result is negative 7.5. The y-intercept occurs at the point 0, negative 7.5. Now we'll describe the end behavior. We have a quadratic function with a positive leading coefficient. This graph will have a trend line matching an upright parabola. The graph will start in the upper left quadrant, and it will end in the upper right quadrant. Since we know the trend line of the graph, we can draw some preliminary sketches at the x and y intercepts. What other points are required to draw the graph accurately? We know this is a quadratic function, so it must have a vertex. A quick way to find the vertex of a parabola is to utilize the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry exists halfway between the x-intercepts, where x equals 1. The y-value can be found by evaluating p at 1. The result is negative 8. The vertex is located at 1, negative 8. We now have enough information to draw the graph. In part b, we'll graph p of x equals negative x squared times x plus 1, a cubic polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. We'll begin by finding the zeros and their multiplicities. Find the roots of the equation p of x equals 0. We can do this by writing the equation negative x squared times x plus 1 equals 0. x squared equals 0 when x equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0 when x equals negative 1. Since the polynomial can be written as negative x times x times x plus 1, the root of 0 has a multiplicity of 2 and will touch the x-axis. The root of negative 1 has a multiplicity of 1 and will cross the x-axis. Draw the x-intercepts. Next, we'll find the y-intercept. We can find the y-intercept by evaluating p at 0, since the y-intercept occurs where x equals 0. Replace the function input with 0 and evaluate. The result is 0.
the y-intercept occurs at the point 0, 0. We already have a point there, so we don't need to draw another one. Now we'll describe the end behavior. We have a cubic function with a negative leading coefficient. This graph will have a trend line matching the line y equals negative x. The graph will start in the upper left quadrant, and it will end in the lower right quadrant. Since we know the trend line of the graph, we can draw some preliminary sketches at the x and y intercepts. At the left x-intercept, the graph is trending to the lower right. At the next x-intercept, the graph touches the x-axis but does not cross. What other points are required to draw the graph accurately? We should get another three points. One, to the left of the first x-intercept. Two, between the two x-intercepts and 3 to the right of the last x-intercept. Let's get the point where x equals negative 2. If we evaluate the function for negative 2, we get a result of 4. Draw a point at negative 2, 4. We can see from our sketch that the graph dips below the x-axis when x equals negative 1, then comes back up at x equals 0. Use the minimum command of your graphing calculator to find the relative minimum, negative 0 0.67, negative 0 Now let's get the point where x equals 1. If we evaluate the function for 1, we get a result of negative 2. Draw a point at 1, negative 2. We now have enough information to draw the graph.